Welcome to part three of our lecture on the electron transport chain. Complex three is the Q cytochrome C oxidoreductase, also called cytochrome BC1 for the heme cofactors that it binds. It is a dimeric protein. Each half is composed of 11 protein chains and a complex collection of cofactors, including several hemes and an iron sulfur cluster. The role of complex three in the electron transport chain is to transfer the electrons carried by coenzyme Q from complexes one and two to a small shuttle protein known as cytochrome C. In this process, it transfers four protons to the inner membrane space and takes two additional protons from the matrix. Here is one half of the complex three dimer with the cofactors used to transport electrons listed. Structures of several different forms have been determined. The 3D structures have revealed the location of the cofactors and two paths that electrons follow. Two of the major protein subunits are cytochromes, meaning that they bind with heme cofactors. The top subunit, shown in yellow, is called cytochrome C1 because it binds to a heme group that adopts the C conformation. The lower subunit is known as cytochrome B as it binds to two heme groups in the B conformation. And a third important subunit is the Reisky subunit that binds the iron sulfur complexes used in the transfer of electrons to the electron carrier cytochrome C which is a separate protein and should not be confused with the cytochrome C1 subunit shown here. There are also two binding sites for coenzyme Q that will be discussed in more detail over the next few slides. Structural analysis has also uncovered many complex details such as unusual motion of the Reisky subunit holding the iron sulfur cluster. And the scientists are still working out how the entire process occurs without short-circuiting the cycle. Cytochrome C, shown here, is a small water-soluble protein that associates as a peripheral membrane protein with the inner mitochondrial membrane on the cytosolic side. Its main purpose is to carry or shuttle electrons between complex three and complex four of the electron transport chain. But it is also involved in the process of apoptosis, which we will discuss later. To mediate its electron carrying function, cytochrome C contains a heme group with an iron ion gripped tightly inside, colored red here. The iron ion readily accepts and releases a single electron. Thus, cytochrome C can carry electrons from complex three to complex four, one at a time. It also can only carry electrons. It cannot carry protons. This is a problem as we have been transferring two electrons and two protons as a unit up until this point. In this case, the electrons have to move through radical transfer instead of as a pair. The coenzyme Q is capable of existing in many different oxidation states, so radical transfer is possible but it would be inefficient and likely unsustainable to only take one electron from the fully reduced coenzyme Q and then release it back into the inner membrane pool of coenzyme Qs when housing a single electron and two protons. If the Q pool has significant portion of the coenzyme Q in this partially filled radical state, it will not be able to pick up pairs of electrons from complex one and complex two. It also cannot be accepted by complex three in this state. Thus, the energy from the electrons of our food molecules would be wasted and our available Q pool to accept electrons and protons from our food molecules would shrink with every round. Similar to all of the other electron carriers, Oxidized Q must be recycled after every round of use so that it can be reused in the cycle. So how does complex three solve this electron transfer problem? It uses a process known as the Q cycle. One fully reduced molecule of coenzyme Q 
binds in a Q site close to the cytosolic side of the membrane. This is followed by the binding of a completely oxidized Q molecule in a lower Q site that is closer to the matrix of the mitochondria. A molecule of cytochrome C then binds with the complex. Once these labile cofactors are bound to complex 3, the two protons attached to the coenzyme Q are released into the inner membrane space. One electron is then transferred up to the cytochrome C. The other electron is transferred down to partially reduce the lower Q molecule. At this point, the fully oxidized coenzyme Q in the upper binding site floats out of the protein and back into the inner membrane pool of coenzyme Q. The cytochrome C that has been loaded with one electron leaves complex three and travels to complex four to deliver the electron. The partially reduced coenzyme Q stays bound to complex three. In part two of the Q cycle, a second fully reduced coenzyme Q molecule binds with complex three. An oxidized cytochrome C carrier protein also binds. The two protons from the reduced coenzyme Q are transferred to the inner membrane space. One electron is then shuttled to the cytochrome C carrier and the other transferred to the partially reduced coenzyme Q. The fully oxidized coenzyme Q is released back into the Q pool and the reduced cytochrome C carrier leaves for complex four. The fully reduced coenzyme Q molecule in the lower binding site attracts two protons from the matrix of the mitochondria. This fully reduced form of coenzyme Q is then released back into the Q pool where it is free to dock into the upper Q binding site in complex three and begin the cycle again. The net energy coming in from one molecule of NADH at complex one or FADH2 at complex two will cause complex three to shift four protons into the inner membrane space and remove two additional protons from the matrix. It will also reduce two molecules of cytochrome C and fully oxidize a total of one coenzyme Q molecule since the Q cycle oxidizes two but then reduces one coenzyme Q.